Hi, this is Thomas from Apex Game Tools. In this video, we'll be looking at replacing the Unity Now Mesh with Apex Path in the survival shooter for the Apex Utility AI. So to do that, um, we will make some changes um, to the scene and some changes to the code. We'll start by looking at the scene changes. So the first thing to look at um, is the units. Uh, we have a number of units that we have moving around the scene, so we need those to use Apex Path instead of using the NowMesh client. To do so, simply find the prefab for the units, and then first you can remove the NowMesh client, and then secondly you can add uh, the Apex components using the quick starts in Apex, quick starts, navigation, and navigating unit, and this will then add all the necessary components uh, for the unit to use Apex Path and you will do that for the player and for the three enemies. In addition to that, you can then tweak uh, the various settings. Uh, the only thing that we've changed in the demo, um, we have changed two things. Uh, we have changed the speed of uh, the units, and for the elephant, we have changed the radius of the unit because it's uh, somewhat bigger than the rest. And then we have also uh, added a script to the player, which allows the player to look at um, the enemies in addition to looking at where it's going. So when it has a target, it will look at the targets. So those are the changes made to the units. Now, uh, the game world obviously also needs to be set up. Um, when you add quick starts to a unit, we will have a game world created for us automatically. Um, so that is uh, added here, as you can see. So what we've done is we have actually rotated the environment 45 degrees so that it is axis aligned. And then we've just added the grid on top of that, because that fits better with the grid. As you can see, we've just added the grid. This is just basic uh, setup, uh, as you would in any other scene with uh, Apex Path. And then you're good to go. So that's it for the uh, settings in the scene. So next up, we'll look at what uh, changes we've made to the scripts. So, as you can see, we have five scripts um, open here, and these are the scripts that we have made changes to in order to migrate from NowMesh to Apex Path. Now, the first one is the enemy, or enemies, so the, uh, we have the enemy script. This has a very subtle change in it, uh, simply has a null check for the attack target. Um, it uses that to set a navigation target as well, but the navigation target, the target has changed a little bit, and it is still the same way of doing it, but the navigation target is now Vector 3 instead of a transform. Now the functionality of the nav target um, is similar, but we have optimized it a little bit. In the original, with the, um, the now mesh, it actually called set destination every single frame. But this is unnecessary because the unit that you are actually um, trying to uh, reach, that is the nav target, that will actually be the position of the player, and the player will never move very far during just a single frame, so there's no need to actually update the path every single frame. Um, that is very inefficient, and uh, basically it can uh, make the pathfinder uh, get behind. So what you want to do is uh, throttle this, so what we've done here is to say the user, or sorry, the player needs to move a certain amount before we actually issue a move order. So that's what we're doing here, checking if we need to do a uh, move order, and if we do, we will then s set the new navigation target and then issue a move order. So that's it for uh, issuing move orders, um, but to do so, uh, to access the unit itself and actually issue move orders to it, we obviously need a reference to the unit, and this is achieved by simply getting the unit facade instead of getting the uh, reference to the NowMesh client. This unit reference is also used to stop the unit once it's been disabled, so we don't have uh, units active when they have uh, been killed. Now, similarly on the player, we have the pretty much the same setup. We have uh, reference to the unit facade. In this case, we have actually exposed it so that it is accessible by uh, so that other scripts can access it, uh, particularly AI um, scripts or actions. And it still uses the player AI movement script. Um, and in here we have the same, where we have a reference to the unit facade, and we use this to move the unit. For the player, it's a little bit different, because here it's actually the AI that will issue move orders, and we simply just issue that to the unit itself. 
So that's very simple. In addition to that, we also want the unit to be able to look at the enemies uh, it is intending to attack or is currently attacking. And to do that, we uh, have the AI inform us when where to look, basically. Um, if it tells us there's, there's nothing to look at, we will then reset the look at on the unit. Um, whereas if it has something to look at, we will record that in this transform variable, and then we will use that in fixed update to set the look at uh, property of our unit to the transform's position. This will make the unit look at whatever target uh, is defined by this look at transform. So uh, that's it for the player AI movement. Now, related to player AI movement, we also have the scan positions um, action. This is used to scan for possible positions that the player can move to. And uh, these are then evaluated, and uh, one is picked so that the player will then move there. This is from th this is uh, going on in the AI, but the exact logic about uh, picking the various uh, the best position is not affected by switching to Apex Path, but scanning for positions is. So this is the change that we have made. Um, as you can see, how you scan in Apex Path is quite simple. You get a reference to the grid, and then you call an apply method on the grid where you pass in an action, which in this case will um, sample the cells and see if they are... We just use a simple sample here. We see if is the cell walkable to this unit. If so, then we will add it to the context's sample positions. So it will ba basically just filter out cells that are blocked by obstacles. And that's all there is to it. Um, one uh, small note is that uh, this, uh, compared to the Namish, this is about eight times faster. So um, that's all there is to it, replacing the Namish with uh, Apex Path. Um, obviously, we can just end this video by showing that it actually works. <laughs> um, we have our little guy moving around and killing stuff. So there you go. See you in the next video.